Hello my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and today's video I'm sharing with you the sketches that I've created in week three of something that I'm calling Sketchmas. This week I struggled a lot and I'll share more about that soon. First of all, what is Sketchmas? Sketchmas is like the artist's vlogmas where I do a sketch every day and share them all in a video from the 1st of December till Christmas. Now my life right now doesn't allow for daily uploads on YouTube at this time so for now I'm doing them all and then sharing all of the sketches a week at a time and posting them daily on Instagram. So if you're not already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. The link is in the description. It's sketching with Sarah. And definitely follow me there if you want to see these drawings as I do them. So let's get into it already. During this drawing challenge that I put on myself, I'm trying to force myself to practice drawing more humans. And if you've seen any of my other videos or know the art that I like to make, I all include animals animals in some way. So I thought I'd do a sketch of a figure and then reward myself for drawing a human by filling in the rest of the page with animal sketches. I've been trying to find really dynamic poses of people to study to challenge myself even further and I found this cool pose of this dude in an action stance of some kind. All of these sketches that I do are in watercolor pencil and it's really forgiving when you sketch it initially because it is like pencil but once you add that water onto it it kind of makes it more permanent on the page. At least the type of paper that my sketchbook is which is mixed media anyway but once you add that water it makes it a little bit more permanent and the less you can change it which makes it hard when you messed up a proportion and then realize it too late. For this pose in particular, I really, really overworked the face and it ends up looking like a cringy, flat anime dude looking face. And it's so small, so it was hard to get too much detail there after I overworked it with the water and it's just a mess. Later on when I try to clean it up more, I realized that the hips and down was a mess too. In the original photo, when I compared my sketch to it, the left hip and the leg was out to the left way more and that was what really made the pose look so strong and stable. As you can see here, it's a little off. He's a little bit more awkward in the way that he's standing. That's the thing about doing figure drawings of people is that one small tiny little mistake is so noticeable and it becomes almost the focal point of the whole drawing because it just looks off. It also sucked that I couldn't fit the feet on the page because I started it to low, which drawing the feet and making sure the whole body is in where I'm drawing, that's what usually helps me to catch proportion errors quicker when the feet don't add up with the rest of the body. So anyway, I tried to save the sketch the best I could, but again, at the end of the day, I think this is what Sketchmas is about, and I think the fact that I'm challenging myself outside of my comfort zone at all, even if it is just a sketch, is cool, and I shouldn't be beating myself up about it, especially just off of one drawing. I'll talk more about this feeling of not being a good enough artist later on, I promise, but for now, let's slide back into my comfort zone and draw an animal. And what better animal to draw that makes me happy than drawing an adorable, floofy alpaca? Let me tell you, I really needed to draw something fluffy and cute after struggling with this figure drawing study, so I really took advantage and just had so much fun drawing this cotton candy baby. There's something just so satisfying about sketching and painting fluffy things and I even add a little bit of blue in there for fun and I just had a lot of fun with this sketch. Next I decided to draw a bottlenose dolphin but in a pink watercolor pencil because I felt like it and I also thought that it would balance out the page nicely with the alpaca and I just wanted to draw in pink more because pink makes me happy, okay? Also after sharing my alligator sketch that I did in the same pink watercolor pencil from last week, when I posted that drawing in particular on Instagram, it came to my attention that people still don't know about the pink dolphins that are called Amazon River Dolphins. And they are just so cool to me and I can't believe more people aren't talking about them daily. If you want to learn more about those dolphins in particular and watch me sketch the Amazon River Dolphins in watercolor pencil, definitely watch my pink animals video. I'll have it linked somewhere for you to click. So again, I really had fun with this sketch and honestly, 
honestly, I was just trying to draw something fun like a pink dolphin so I can try and feel like I can draw again. Next, I didn't want to overcrowd that page and honestly, I just wanted a fresh start so I moved on to the next page and since it's a new page, I thought I would try and redeem myself and draw an even harder figure study and this time the pose included the dreaded foreshortening. Or shortening is where there is an arm or something pointed directly at you and when you draw it in a 2D space, it looks shorter. It's kind of hard to explain but basically since you can't see the whole thing spread out to the side and because it's straight at you, it's harder to capture that perspective of an arm for example. At least it is for me. Which is why I really should be practicing more figure studies and maybe just in regular pencils so I don't feel as pressured to get it right the first time when I have that option to erase better. This pose specifically I struggled with that darn shoulder and how forward the shoulder blade is but also with the arm back but also some of the back is showing and that whole section was just really challenging for me. Also just as a side note the thing about my filming setup is that I'm actually drawing at an angle to the drawing paper and my camera is recording it straight down so while I'm drawing it does skew a little bit more because I'm not right on top of the drawing if that makes sense because that's where my camera is and you would just be seeing the back of my head. And I remember when I took life drawing classes in college I would be so particular about making sure I kept my head at the same exact angle toward the model and it's important how you angle your easel so you can try and keep a consistent angle of viewing. All of that is so important to keeping an accurate drawing. So I spent a lot of time sketching this one and honestly I was alright with it up until I took a photo to post it on Instagram and all of the errors were just screaming at me like the size of the feet and that darn shoulder just was still bothering me. But I still posted it because I still think it's important to show that not every sketch is gonna be amazing. It is your sketchbook after all. Now is when I want to get into the topic of how after drawing not one but two figure drawings that I'm not proud of and how that started to make me feel like my art isn't good enough. Now that I've finished art school and I am technically a professional artist now, I haven't really been marketing my art that much and because of that I haven't been getting a lot of work as an artist and sometimes I can't help but feel like I'm not good enough. Now don't get me wrong, I know I've created some amazing artwork, especially in my portfolio that I'm really passionate about and I really do enjoy. But then I think, you know, those pieces of art have actually taken weeks of critique and editing and reworking and really trying to make it the best it can be. And that took a lot of time. And the situation that I'm in isn't really that buzzword imposter syndrome where you feel like you don't deserve what you have because I don't really have a big following and I'm not really thriving on my art at the moment financially but sometimes seeing the low likes on my posts and the low views it does discourage me sometimes. Now I know that likes and views does not equal awful content because I know the algorithm is a thing and sometimes it just doesn't work in your favor and blah 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 but sometimes I just can't help but feel discouraged. It also doesn't help when the people around me are telling me that I should get a real job and I know that they're looking out for me and it comes from a genuine place of love but it still hurts a little. But after that brief sting, those comments genuinely make me want to work even harder. I may be rusty in drawing people because I haven't in a while and I think that's normal. If you don't draw something for a year and then you try to and you don't like it, that's kind of to be expected I think. And it just reminds me what really makes me inspired and what makes me enjoy arts and that is studying and drawing and learning about animals. I'm really glad I'm challenging myself during Sketchmas to do at least the little figure drawings here and there and I feel like after this I'll do some more private figure drawings not on camera just to practice but I just love drawing animals so much and I don't think that'll ever change. So after doing this archery lady drawing I thought it would be fun to fill the rest of the page with some forest animals and naturally I decided to draw a young deer. I wanted to really focus on the face though so I found a cool reference photo with some nice lighting to study from. Also if you want to see any of the reference photos that I use for any of my drawings, 
Most of them can be found in my art references Pinterest board and my Pinterest profile is linked in the description if you want to check it out. There's all kinds of pictures that I'm either inspired by and plan to draw in the future or I actually do end up using to do sketches and study from. So if you want to draw along with me, that's a good place to look. I'll be honest, most of the pins on there are just cool animal photography. Go figure. Anyway, I really love deers and I just think there's something so elegant but also so, so adorable about them. For this drawing, I really enjoyed his giant ears and those antlers. They were kind of smallish. Granted, they did get cut off of the page, but they didn't extend too much farther than that, so they were still quite small. I tried to see if the photo on like the webpage that it was on said what type of deer or gazelle this was, but I couldn't find anything, so let me know if you know in the comments. They also have this mustache looking shape around their nose too, which I thought was kind of interesting. Anyway, there's a quick watercolor pencil sketch of some kind of deer face. Next, I decided to stay on the forest animal theme here, and the first animal I think of when I think of a forest is first a deer, but then immediately after I think of a squirrel, so I decided to draw a little squirrel. In the reference photo that I used for this guy, he was like hanging off of a branch, and I just thought it was really interesting the way he was hanging on it and how his tail was kind of dangling, but unfortunately the lower half didn't make it onto this page, so I studied the upper half instead. I just love their little paws and how finger-like they are and how they can just really grip onto anything with those long claws. Also the branch that was in that photo was really interesting because the bark was kind of flaking off of it. So parts of it was smoother where the bark chipped off and exposed it. Complete side note, but I just love squirrels and they are everywhere. And here's little story time. I love walking my dog Kista around parks with trails and a lot a lot of the parks that I go to have giant trees, so naturally there's also so many squirrels and if and when my dog sees one, she bolts. If she sees a squirrel, she's dragging you to it. It's so funny though because obviously the squirrel is smart and it'll just fly up a tree and my dog will just try so, so, so hard to jump up the tree to catch the squirrel and the squirrel's just sitting up there like laughing, I feel like. It's just kind of funny. And I just kind of let her do her little jumping on her hind legs up the tree as much as she wants. I just think, you know, good luck with that. <laughs> it's just so cute seeing how excited she she gets. I just love her so much and I live for moments like that with her. So yeah, here's a squirrel sketch in watercolor pencil. The last drawing from this third week of Sketchmas, I thought another foresty animal is a hedgehog. And as I was scrolling Pinterest for a good reference photo of one, I found the cutest photo of a hedgehog wearing a little flower crown and it was just so cute and precious, I simply could not pass it up. So I drew a little hedgehog with a flower crown and I love it. Drawing these little critters definitely made me happy and, and this whole week made me realize that I can have a bad drawing or two in my sketchbook and that does not make me a bad artist. Also, like I said, these drawings are in my sketchbook, so I gotta stop putting this pressure on my sketchbook to make good drawings because sketchbooks are for practice. I guess maybe I was hard on myself because I decided to post a sketch every day and when I posted, I want it to look good obviously on my Instagram, you know, so there's that pressure. But at the end of the day, I started this whole sketchmas thing to sketch every day and I think Doing just that is awesome and something to be proud of. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video here every Friday and I would love for you to become a creative critter with me and follow along on my YouTube journey. If you made it this far, leave me a comment and let me know how your week is going and if you related to anything that I talked about in this video, I'd love to know. So let's have a conversation below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, stay creative, and I'll see you in next Friday's video.